Good evening, Winnebago community, Winnebago workforce, Winnebago membership. Uh, this is the COVID-19 update for the Winnebago tribe of Nebraska. My name is John Snowball, a uh, member of the tribal council and the pandemic task force chairman. Um, look forward to getting to the updates this week. Uh, I wanted to greet you all. You know, it's a really uh, difficult time where we're, we're social distancing and we don't get to see our friends like we used to. We don't get to see our family like we used to. And understanding that we need to take care of our happiness, take care of our minds. And uh, so I would encourage you to do that and uh, and utilize uh, the devices and, and the internet to to stay close with your loved ones, because that's important. That's important for our for our happiness and our spirit and understanding that that leads to good health as well. So with that, I'll, I'll pass along to this week's uh, updates. Uh, Public Health Director Mona Zavante. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, good evening, uh, Winnebago community. Um, I just wanted to say a few words before we got to our slideshow. Um, in the past few weeks, we've seen um, some peaks and valleys, and we knew that this would occur. We knew that with the seasons changing, it could work for or against us. I know there are several indoor family activities that will be going on, ranging from sports parties, Thanksgiving and Christmas, but we have to stay vigilant with our actions because they can affect many of many people around us. <clears throat> so what we've been seeing, unfortunately, is that people are feeling that their inner circles can't possibly get it. We have a lot of disbelief from our people because they didn't think it could happen to them. And I know that everyone is tired and wants to enjoy themselves and go back to living their life. And the majority of the people will be able to get COVID and be okay, but there are others that won't. And we just don't have all of the answers, such as the long-term effects on people. We have gone to Sioux City and seen many people not wearing their masks. So unfortunately, with the last guidance that we received, um, it is vital for positive people to wear their masks. And since we don't know who is positive, we still have to all wear our masks. Um, the window of shedding that virus is three days prior to um, showing symptoms. So I just wanted to remind everyone um, and urge you to please wear your mask when you're not in your household. So I will start uh, today's updates um, and go over uh, where we stand as of today. Okay, so starting with the, the updates um, for as of this morning, um, we have 172 positive cases in Winnebago. 150 have recovered. Um, we've had a total of 1,110 negative tests. We have 19 currently active with 31 families in quarantine. And then as you can see from the positive age groups that um, our highest numbers are between 20 and 29 years of age with 31%, followed by 0 to 19 with 22%, and then 30 to 39 years old with 18%. The positive um, cases um, breaking down by gender is um, almost equal. So we have 52% that are male and 48% that are female. So this um, bar graph kind of shows how um, the isolated cases are about 84 of the people and 88 of them have been linked to one of the 84 people, which indicates why it's so important to wear your mask and sanitize your hands. And this slide just shows you the positive cases over time. And so you can see with our first case back in April and then the peaks and valleys up until today. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Laura. Um, she has some updates from the hospital. Thank you. All right, thanks, Mona. Um, we just wanted to give a few reminders as we get into the uh, winter months uh, at the hospital. We, uh, prior to, you know, 
probably the last few weeks, everybody's been really good about following a lot of the um, restrictions that we have or some of the policies that we put in place uh, since COVID's been out there. But we've kind of taken a couple steps back on some things and uh, we just need to make sure that we keep our patients and our staff safe in our facility. And um, we don't like putting these restrictions in, but it has worked for us. And we need to stay the course on these things. Um, and so one of the things are the visitor restrictions. Uh, there are many places right now that aren't allowing any visitors in. We are at least allowing one healthy person to come into the building. And when we, when we talk about healthy people, if you know that you're COVID positive, please don't come in as a support person or a visitor. Um, we want you to stay home. We want you to be quarantined like, like you should be. We've had um, cases where people have come to the ED um, and um, they, we know the patient's COVID positive that are the person that's COVID positive that is with the patient. And so sometimes we do ask those patient, those people to leave, those visitors to leave. We will take care of the patient, no doubt about it. But if you're a visitor and we know you're COVID positive um, and we're able to take care of that patient, we may ask you to leave. Um, so we want you to continue to come uh, enter the building for that east entrance. The front entrance, the front normal entrance is for the employees. Um, that east entrance is by the emergency room down there. We do have a uh, greeter down there most of the day. We're looking at putting somebody down there um, longer time periods, uh, just to kind of help people out, remind them that they need to wear their mask at all times when they're in the building. We've also had some people come in and not want to wear a mask and get very upset because we make them wear a mask when they come in. And that just isn't, uh, doesn't help anybody. Uh, we, you know, we're trying to keep everybody safe and it's, we've done a pretty good job of it so far. So please be aware that we are going to ask you to wear a mask. Uh, each patient can have one healthy visitor. The support person must be 19 years or older and have no symptoms, including a fever or cough. Uh, minors or any person with limited ability to understand or communicate will be allowed one accompanying adult. The accompanying adult must be immediate family member, power of attorney, or a guardian. And then um, COVID testing, that's been a, another thing people have been asking too. So we do do the COVID testing and we've been doing asymptomatic um, people too, but we do that by appointment only. Uh, we, we really don't can't have you coming to the um, emergency department to get a test if, if you just feel like you need a test and you don't have any symptoms and you really don't need to be seen in the emergency department. We're trying again to limit the number of people that come into the facility. We want to take care of those patients that need to be taken care of, but uh, we can definitely um, do your COVID testing drive through uh, the next day or that normally you can get in that day. We've been testing about 25 to 30 people a day. Uh, so please call the outpatient clinic if you need an, uh, an appointment for that. 402-878-3404. The other thing, we get a lot of calls. Someone will get tested and an hour later, they'll call and want their test results back. That's just not uh, feasible. Uh, we're, like I said, we're testing uh, out in the outpatient or in the drive through area, about 30 patients a day. Plus, we're testing inside too. So, we're, you know, allow us 24 hours to get your test results back. It's normally going to be to you before that, but um, we'll call them, we'll call you as soon as we can, as soon as we get those test results. So, please just be patient with that and, and we appreciate your patience. And that's all I have for today. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Um, as a reminder for everyone watching, you can email questions you have about COVID to COVID at WinnebagoTribe.com and we will answer those in our uh, next update, which is scheduled for Thursday, November 19th at 7 p.m. Um, so now we'll move on uh, to Dan with Winnebago Public Schools. Dan? Good afternoon, everyone. I know as everybody's aware, we did close down today. This was after consulting with Mona in the health department. It is due to um, both staffing issues and also meeting the threshold for families and houses in the community being met 
according to our return to learn plan. Some of the staff have tested positive. Some staff have been in close contacts and were directed to stay at home. Some staff had to stay home with their children as daycare providers in other communities were shut down. Also, we had staff members who have had loved ones in accidents and have been in accident themselves. Uh, so, um, and so we are, it was more of trying to fill the void for staffing than anything else. So we did close down today. Tomorrow was um, not a scheduled day for students. And I'm going to consult with Mona on Sunday to make a decision about next week and termination. We are following all safety protocols. We're um, following the essential worker protocols. Um, if some staff believe they've been in close contact, they come down and get an N95 mask. Some of them wear a double mask. So we're doing everything we can. We have the desk shields for the students. Also, I want to remind parents and, of, um, and uh, when we go virtual, make sure that your students get on and complete their work. We've had two recessions and they've been very successful. We had over 60 students um, two weeks ago for the 712. Last Friday, we had elementary and we had approximately 30 students come in and uh, we provide lunch during that time. Our next tutor session will be for 712 students on November, Friday, November 13th. Lunch is always provided during that time. We also require any staff and um, anyone who enters the building take his or her temperature and wear a mask. And that's been going real well for us as far as people here. But it's again, it's when they get outside. And I know this is an issue that's not only here, but across our area. It's really been an increase. So it is imperative that we continue to follow the safety measures, wear masks, social distance, and sanitize and wash your hands as needed. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, next up, we will go to Manoj with Little Priest Tribal College. Manoj? <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Um, here's an update from Little Priest Tribal College. The spring 2021 registration has opened. As I mentioned last time, uh, for all Title IV eligible degree-seeking students, full-time students, four, four free classes, a free laptop for a new student, and free textbooks. If you're a part-time student, and if you're a Title IV and degree-seeking, you get two free classes, three textbooks, and a free laptop if you're a new student. I can't emphasize this deal. Um, we all have heard of Black Friday sale. This is as big of a Black Friday sale you can think of. So please make sure you utilize it. Um, we want to be busy registering students. Please contact our faculty advisors. If you're a new student, please contact Maria Garcia in the uh, admissions office. Also, um, we have seen that many students are not applying for American Indian College Fund scholarships. Please remember that we have to spend that money and distribute that money. So the fall 2020 season is done, but the spring 2021 will be open pretty soon. Please do not miss out an opportunity to um, get that money for your, especially for your living expenses. Then, um, as also in spring 2021, we will be having students on campus. We are taking, uh, we are preparing really hard for spring 2021 to make sure that we are ready. We have actions uh, plan in uh, plan in place, and we are actually very confident things will be going very very smoothly. Uh, we have one active case at Little Priest Tribal College, one employee, as, which brings to a total in the entire pandemic of two cases. We also have two family, uh, two employees quarantined because their family members have tested positive. Again, we are taking enough precautions for all working employees to remain safe and uh, we are mask is a, is a, is a must. 
Also, uh, there will be some infrastructure improvements at the college. And I'll be sending a an update, COVID update number seven to the college, to the students, and to the community, hopefully either today or tomorrow. That will have all the details of how the spring 2021 uh, semester will go. Also, if you need any as financial assistance for food, paying internet bills, please contact Yati Muhammad or Ashley Coons at the Office of Financial Aid. Again, I, I can't emphasize enough the importance of you guys contacting us so we can help you. Also, if you have, uh, also at the college, we had some, uh, some um, office changes. So we have uh, moved some offices. So if you're having difficulty finding somebody, uh, please make sure to be, uh, come down to the main campus at the entrance and we'll make sure you find the right person. Again, um, I, I, uh, I wanna emphasize what Mauna said, to take care of yourself, social distancing as we go into fall season. Um, and uh, I hope we all had voted and we are also, uh, you know, wish you guys a very safe and next uh, two weeks. Take care and have a good night. Thank you, Manoj. Next up, we will um, go to Sam Burrish with HCI for updates. Sam? Thank you, Emily, and good evening. Um, brief update today. We'd like to thank everyone who voted this week. The successful ballot measures to expand gaming in Nebraska are a historic milestone for Ho-Chunk Inc. and the Winnebago tribe. We're thrilled voters across Nebraska overwhelmingly supported the measures, and we're also excited about the long-term employment and economic benefits this will bring to the tribe. We're just getting started in the planning phases for the casinos and the new gaming division, so we look forward to being able to share more. Um, in the meantime, if you'd like to learn more about this, you can search for Keep the Money in Nebraska or visit their Facebook page. That's my update for today, so thank you for your time. Thank you, Sam. And uh, lastly, we will go over to Mayan Beltran with Winnebago's. Mayan? Hello, Winnebago community. Um, so we only have a few updates, and, and one of them is we did have a, a positive COVID test in the last few days. Uh, we do have two individuals on uh, quarantine for close contact with family members. So as far as the, the COVID-19, uh, we've been doing very well out here. We're still requiring masks of all employees and all uh, guests uh, taking your temperature when you come in and uh, recommending constant washing of hands, use hand sanitizer, uh, be safe out there, use your social distancing. Um, it is that time of year where people are inside more, so we are looking at opportunities for uh, allowing smoking in our casino in, in a designated area, so we're working on a phase three plan uh, because of the weather. Uh, is, is going to turn cold again and, and bad again. So we don't want our uh, team members or our guests to have to go outside. Uh, so we're working on a plan for that currently. Um, and that's really all we have at this point. Um, so stay safe out there, protect your children, protect your elders, protect your family. Thank you. Thank you, Mayan. Um, next up, we will move on to the question and answer portion of today's update. Uh, thank you to everybody who sent in questions. We only have a couple for this week, uh, so I will go ahead and get those um, questions. Um, the first question says, does the health department recommend humidifiers or dehumidifiers to help prevent the spread of COVID? Um, is it an airborne virus? Um, Mona, can you answer that question? <clears throat> sure. Um, a humidifiers or dehumidifiers won't um, exactly prevent the spread. It actually doesn't. There's not even any studies um, proving that the filters can reduce allergy or asthma symptoms. But um, I know that we have um, provided them to some of our individuals in um, isolation 
because um, they felt that the the steam helped them um, with just some of the respiratory issues that they were facing. Um, but just a reminder that um, COVID is from the air aerosol. Um, so basically, if you sneeze, cough, uh, spit um, onto someone, then that is how they're actually getting it. So I don't think investing in a whole bunch of humidifiers or dehumidifiers will um, will help. Okay, thank you for that information, Mona. Uh, next question is, uh, do the COVID tests report false negatives? Uh, what is the failure rate for the tests that the hospital uses? Um, Laura, can you answer that one? Yes, um, the uh, test is that we're currently using it, and I just talked to Ann, the laboratory uh, uh, director today, we're at about 99% um, accurate testing right now. We've had very few uh, false um, negatives come back. Uh, we keep track of those. We watch that. We work with patients that have been sent to other facilities uh, to make sure that when they get retested there, we're, we're watching what the tests come back there. And so we're pretty happy with the test of results that we're getting. And I think it's helping us get patients into quarantine quicker and um, helping with the spread. So we're really happy with the testing results. Great, thank you for that information, Laura. Um, and the last question is, um, in regards to the presentation um, that we do every week. Uh, so um, it says, I like the age breakdowns and data of the positive COVID cases. With all of the contract, contact investigations going on, um, we should look at where the virus is coming from to help prevent further spread. Is it possible to add a category of where the positive cases are getting the virus? Mona, can you answer that? <laughs> Um, sure. Yeah. So next week, I or sorry, in two weeks, I will do my best to try and incorporate um, some of that data. Um, I appreciate any feedback. So um, if you want to see other things, we can certainly do our best. Just be mindful that some people have no idea, um, but we'll do our best to, to present it as we can. Great. Thank you so much, Mona. Um, so that concludes today's uh, community update. Thank you all for joining us and thank you all for watching. Um, you can catch us um, in two weeks from today on Thursday, November 19th at 7 p.m. And again, email any questions you have um, for uh, uh, the health officials at covid at winnebagotribe.com and we will answer those in our next community update. Thank you all and we'll see you in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you.